Hello friends, Professor Neotoy here, and I just wanted to do a, a quick video about this thing that has been sort of circling the drain of the YouTubes for a while now, Tesla Vortex Math. Um, there's some great debunking videos out there. Um, on my video specifically is about what I think Tesla Vortex Math actually refers to because like most truths that have sort of percolated through the hive mind throughout the millennia, um, it's based on a seed of truth, um, which is this concept of the vortex and specifically these three numbers, 369. And uh, I wanted to link it to, to um, the isotropic vector matrix, which I think is really critical in sort of completing the picture of what Tesla was probably referring to and sort of the seed, like I said, that is the root of what makes this so interesting. Now, um, this diagram, I don't know if this is attributed to Tesla, but I suspect not. I think it's probably something that came about later on but I like to point out the obvious flaws with this before even bothering with um, sort of redirecting to the mathematical debunking of this particular diagram. But first of all, let's just look at this. Um, there's a circle completely pointless. Uh, so right away, this diagram is completely uh, debased. Secondly, base 10 number si system, 1 through 9, once again, completely arbitrary. So this really has nothing to do with with anything. It's just uh, random uh, geometric shapes and connections trying to make sense of a universe that doesn't fit neatly into an anthropocentric sort of system. So let's just do away with this completely and I will try to um, flesh out what I think is probably the basis of the whole seed thought behind vortex math that Tesla's on about which ties in very closely with the isotropic vector matrix which as some people will know is this really uh, famous uh, geometric structural configuration that many many polymaths and intellectuals throughout history have played around with which is basically just a connecting matrix of equilateral triangles and of course the beauty of this is that uh, the distance between every node or point is exactly the same and it's also considered to be st structurally, mechanically, the most minimally and maximally, uh, like mi minimally in terms of components required and maximally in considering the structural integrity and strength of, of the matrix. So in other words, if you are creating a structure in space where the laws of physics uh, apply, then pretty much um, the absolute minimal amount of structure that you would need to create something in that space that would be freestanding uh, subject to the laws of physics is the isotropic vector matrix. And it's also incidentally the strongest configuration of, uh, you know, elements that you could compose in that space. So because of that, like fundamentally, I would say this qualifies as sort of a universal construct or concept that um, is relevant in many ways, unlike an arbitrary circle base 10 uh, random number thing. So that's the isotropic vector matrix, in case you didn't already know. So here's what I wanted to introduce here, which is what is the, the link between a hypothetical vortex math or Tesla's obsession 
with the number 3 and this series of numbers 369. So here's my alternative vortex math diagram that I think is probably more accurate to what Tesla probably had in mind when he was uh, composing this idea in the beginning. So here is basically vortex math. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can do this however you want. And then lastly, 7, 8, and 9. So this is like a true vortex, what you would think of as concentric interconnecting um, lines of force connected by nodes, that this is based on physics. And it's also essentially the isotropic vector matrix. And um, so in terms of what sort of mathematical functions you can derive from this, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician, and I don't really care about math. I'm a lot more interested in physics and structure and so forth because I feel like that's sort of the foundation to understanding or decoding the universe. So, um, yeah, this um, is sort of a, an illustration or a symbolic key that shows you how the universe is structured because essentially what we have in the universe is the isotropic vector matrix that is the nature or the structure of the universe because if you don't have structure you don't have lines of force connected by nodes which are really just intersections of lines of force and not really something that exists independently of those lines of force you don't have anything you have nothing so the fact that there is space, that there is structure to the universe, implies that fundamentally at the lowest level, the isotropic vector matrix is there. We just can't see it. And in my opinion, that's basically what gravity is. Gravity is essentially an invisible isotropic vector matrix that has created the space that our universe occupies. And of course, because of forces that are way beyond my ability to comprehend, but like uh, the Big Bang or whatnot, essentially that matrix has been distorted and twisted and compressed and all sorts of topological contortions have been applied. But fundamentally, the isotropic vector matrix structure is still there underlying all that we know. And the beauty of the isotropic vector matrix is it's bidirectionally bi infinite. So you have a, a um, octahedron and a tetrahedron um, pair that basically interlocks in a three-dimensional space that can go bidirectionally in either direction to the macro, to the micro. And uh, that fundamentally could be what everything that we know of in the universe consists of. Um, so yeah, 369, right? It's just, um, it's a numerical representation of the interleaving, overlapping supersymmetry of equilateral triangles, which is fundamentally the isotropic vector matrix, which is in turn the substance of the universe. And, um, gravity, you know... I feel as one manifestation, it's possible that all forces and all objects, entities, whether they're molecules, atoms, subatomic particles, they could all be an aspect of the isotropic vector matrix, contorted, twisted, some sort of super high level math could be responsible for explaining how uh, the matrix itself can be twisted, compressed, contorted, um, deformed in so many ways that it forms these 
uh, complicated overlapping patterns, which then, you know, come to represent all of these other forces, whether they be the spiral arm of a galaxy, a planet, um, a neutron star, um, a glass of water, you know, whatever. It's all theoretically possible if you are able to do the math to such a level that you can abstract the IVM into these forms, you know, whether or not humans or even super advanced artificially intelligent computers could ever decipher that kind of uh, complexity. Because it's like uh, it's like that famous quantum physics experiment where you have the um, uh, the cylinder with the um, I actually have a video on my channel somewhere buried deep in the past where basically you have a cylinder with a, um, a gel-like liquid inside and you have a little stirring arm that goes down and then you have a little crank handle and then there's a drop of ink in there and then you stir the, you turn the handle and it stirs the, the fluid and the ink becomes very um, diffused to the point where like it, it's a concentrated drop and then through the turning it's diffused to the point where it turns into a cloud and then it eventually completely disappears into the fluid and diffuses and then the magic happens you turn the crank in the opposite direction and you can watch the universe ba basically be rewound as the um the uh cloud of amphorous undiscernible ink recoalesces and concentrates into that original droplet so this is kind of like the concept of the universe if the ivm just suddenly started like unspooling or uncollapsing or however the big bang still nobody knows exactly what happened then but uh, the amount of time that it would take for the space that the entire universe would eventually occupy to expand into a full IVM and then for over the countless period of time between then and now that all of the uh, entities and uh, complexities of that system being uh, turbulence and, and whatnot that who knows where that comes from it could just be a consequence of the IVM expanding in in a zero space that, that, that where there's nothing who knows that there could be something outside of that IVM form that is affecting and influencing the IVM as it expands um anyway so yeah all the turbulence and complications inside of that field of the vector matrix then have a chance to form and articulate and express themselves and uh, if there was some way to rewind the, all of those actions you could theoretically get back to when it all started and figure out exactly what happened but i don't i don't think humans will ever be able to achieve that level of in, insight or interpretation of the facts so anyway yeah so tesla vortex math doesn't make any sense classically as it's defined in these viral videos and like i said they've been debunked but i think 369 you know tesla also there's that famous quote of him about like if you want to understand the universe frequency modulation understand those things or, or something like something along those lines yeah 369 frequency uh isotropic vector matrix uh, these things make a lot more sense to me than just an arbitrary circle that has some like factoring possibilities so yeah anyway um uh, share your thoughts and thanks for watching